If you're interested to learn where the journey YouTube channel suddenly disappeared, where from Critical Thinker suddenly appeared, and what's been happening with my life lately, then stay tuned for this video. Hey, Critical Thinkers. That is actually how I am planning to start your affair uh, to you guys and women, everyone in between as my audience, because that's the direction I decided to focus on. And obviously there's a story with that, uh, but you're, if you're interested in that story, I'm inviting you to grab a cup of coffee, tea, whatever is your preferred drink, whiskey, and uh, sit down with me and let's dig into the story. So, energize ourselves and continue. So some of you reached out to me and asked me with concern, so where did the Journey YouTube channel disappear? And uh, I'm thinking maybe some of you don't even know that the channel was there to begin with. Uh, so I'll quickly recap what's been happening lately, this, this pretty much last year. Uh, at the end of previous year, so that's uh, 2019, after I came back from training at SBG Ireland, the mixed martial arts gym, I trained there for three months, trained at MMA before. Pretty much I trained a lot, martial arts a, a lot. And as most of you know, I trained martial arts for more than 15 years uh, in general, in total. And as, after I came back to my country, Lithuania, where I'm at right now, I realized that I'm, I started to lose passion for martial arts, which was such a big part of my life. And you know, there's, there's many reasons why that happened. And I made a bunch of videos on this channel about that. Uh, but short, long story short, short, I just, you know, eventually I decided that martial arts are not as intriguing to me anymore as much it is used to be. And funny enough, that's where my source of income was. Uh, that was the Martial Arts Journey YouTube channel, which was about basically about applying critical thinking into martial arts and documenting my journey, how I do that. As I realized that I lost my passion for martial arts, at least at the moment, uh, that I realized also that it's not something that works with me. Or to explain it in other words, uh, I, I'm kind of a driven, passion-driven person. I, I feel like it's important for me to have a passion, a bigger goal to pursue. And beforehand, it was spreading critical thinking through martial arts, uh, sharing my journey, learning, you know, learning from the mistakes I did, documenting them. All of that meant very much to me, and I think I managed to, to create a sort of a global impact with my journey, with my story in martial arts journey. But then when I realized that my passion for martial arts is decreasing, I had to ask myself, so damn, so what do I do next? Because one option was to just keep pumping footage about martial arts into martial arts journey and just kind of pretending that it's fine. But as I said, it's not really something that I, I would be okay with. Uh, I, so that led me to understand, okay, I need to find what I'm passionate about besides martial arts. And, and as I mentioned, it's so important for me, it's kind of my, one of the core aspects of my life is trying to create significant value in uh, the lives of others. And so I went on this journey to ask myself what that could be. That led me to create a new channel, uh, The Journey, uh, which some of you were following, and it was kind of a lot of experimenting there. I, I made a lot of vlogs, recapping various stories, and it was a lot of things like this, like sitting down and just talking to you and just exploring my stories and exploring what, what I am passionate about and what's valuable to you, like kind of that synthesis of my passion and the, the offering of value. So what where my passion could provide more value to you. So I made a lot of videos like about yoga and about some about Aikido again, and uh, and I tried so many different things. And eventually I started to realize that some of those got like, they, they got uh, a fair amount of attention, like a bunch of people watched them and appreciated them. And, and I think some of the people started to like the, the channel, The Journey, but there was a feeling in me all the time that that was nagging me that that the channel did not have a clear direction. It was more kind of my personal aspiration of trying to discover what value I could provide to others. It was kind of a process documented, uh, but, but there was no clear direction aside from that, uh, which is also like a vast, searching for your kind of clinical purpose is such a vast you know, thing to look for. But eventually I came to this significant moment, which is again recorded in a video, which is called, I realized I lack education. As I was exploring what I could give to people or what I want to give, I came to a conclusion that, holy crap, I am not a master, I'm a master of none. 
you know, beforehand I was like an instructor of Aikido for many years and uh, I was a yoga instructor and, and, and then I moved to becoming martial arts journey guy, you know, the YouTuber who's documenting his journey, but that's, that's like not really mastery, but that was my field. And suddenly I'm, I, you know, I dropped Aikido entirely. I dropped yoga. I dropped my spiritual teacher status. And now I'm, and I, I put aside the martial arts journey YouTube channel. And then suddenly there's that question of, okay, so, so what's left? What can I offer? And, and there was kind of a little bit of a crisis. Like it wasn't like a significant crisis where I was like emotionally shaken, but there was that consideration. So crap, okay, I don't really have a strong base to offer something to others. Uh, so, so my first instinct was, okay, I need to just go wild and become mad about learning. Actually, one of the books I read at that moment was a book written by Cal Newport, So Good You Can't Be Ignored, which promotes that it's a mistake to try to give something that you don't have. Basically, like kind of like a simple notion, right? A mistake I used, I did many times in my life, uh, and I'm still, you know, kind of capable of doing that mistake. But I really read that book. Really resonated with me, which said, people will value by how much value you will create for them. Actually, that's my phrase, but that's kind of what the guy said as well. It's one of my favorite phrases. But then he promoted that you need to invest as much as you can into becoming the expert of your field and then, and then you share that thing. So also, uh, at the beginning of this year, as I was just starting the journey at the YouTube channel, I read a bunch of books and one of them was Seth Godin's a famous marketing expert, which actually made a couple of videos about him on, on this channel. So he, he writes a book, he wrote a book, famous book known as Purple Cow, where he states that a great way to go is to choose a, a very narrow field and become a super expert at that. And I really like that idea. Like, like, like I, I'll give a blunt example. It's not like a legit example, but you understand what I'm talking about. So he said, you know, don't be a doctor and don't even be doctor of the ears, but become the best in the world doctor uh, for the right ear. And you know, that, that whenever somebody would say, oh, my right ear has an inflammation or has some trouble, everybody would suddenly think about you and they would say, oh, go to this person. That person is really good with right ears. They won't think about anyone else because you're so specific about what you do. And all of that started to make me think, okay, so where do I want to, because I am kind of still on, very much so on a journey, I asked myself, so where can I devote myself in a specific area where I could thrive and 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 collect value and offer that value to others, to, to you? So that was kind of a period as well, which I think that's why I started to also back away from documenting much about it. I, I started a coaching course, like going on a, co a coaching course, which I'm still on, and I enjoy it, but I don't think I'm as passionate about coaching as I expect it to be, but that's a whole different video. <laughs> But, uh, but I'm going on that court coaching course and then also I, I start asking myself, so, so what am I so passionate about that I could invest dozens upon dozens upon hundreds upon thousands of hours into that specific area? I wouldn't get tired of it. I wouldn't get bored of it. And I would learn so much about it that I could actually create value for others. And initially my guess was talent or the debunking of talent. I realized I was always interested about what makes people exceptional, what, what makes people great. And because I, I became so enthusiastic about critical thinking, I, I, I looked at it through a critical thinking perspective. I didn't read books just like fluffy books about, you know, become the greatest, but I, I sought out books which were talking about the science behind talent, proving that talent doesn't really matter that much, that it's so much about hard work and 10,000 hours, all these theories which were scientifically proven. And I was like, I was hooked. I was like, I enjoyed collecting uh, science-based knowledge about that field. And I created the strategy, which I haven't shared with you yet, uh, which I called mad learning. Sip of coffee. So mad learning, as I mentioned, my, my concept was, my, my approach was to become as good as I can be at a narrow field, which I'm driven about and which is valuable to others as quick as I can. So I started becoming mad with learning, AKA <laughs> thus mad learning. So this, this is actually why I'm wearing these earphones and you can, you, you can see them in the past couple of months. You can see them in my videos, in my photos, photos wearing them because I started downloading audiobooks, like really, really, like, pick, like really investigating the best of the best books. Because my, my philosophy is, if you learn, you should learn from the best. 
that you can that you can film. And so I downloaded those audiobooks and I started listening to them like mad. Like, you know, I wake up and these days I do that too. I'll get to that soon enough, but, but the strategy is the same. So I go to the shower, I place my phone where I can hear it and I, I start playing in an audiobook. And so as I'm showering, I'm listening to the audiobook. I go to take out my dog for a walk, I'm listening to an audiobook. You know, I go to the store to buy stuff, I listen to my audiobook. So I, I listen to it everywhere and all the time. And then when I can't listen to it, I also download is, uh, another book on my phone, on, on Kindle, so that whenever I cannot listen to it, let's say, you know, I'm in a crowded place or, or just for any reason, I, t I take out the phone or like I'm on, on my toilet, I do that too. When I'm sitting on the toilet, I don't have my earphones, for example, or if I got them, I take my phone and I start reading the book. So I'm like reading and investigating all the time. My notion was also that if I make videos about that, I, I discovered through that skill learning, the, the talent phase, let's call it, that was actually suggested in those books, <clears throat> that one way to develop yourself is to share the information you learned, to, to recap it, to, to take out the main information. And I thought, you know what? Making videos is such a great way to do that. And that's where, if you look at the, the channel, at this channel, you'll see there's a bunch of videos about more or less like talent or, or mastery as I like to call it. And that's, that's actually, that was the gist behind it. I just didn't share the process with you yet that I came to the decision when I'll read the book, whatever I like most about it, I'll make a video about it. Like, you know, quoting the data, quoting the, the, the person who said that idea. So I wouldn't present myself as the master, you know, because I'm not, but, but I would quote information, which, which is really good. And I would also, you know, I would also test it. I would look at different sources to make sure that it's, it's correct information. I would put some effort into it, but that would make me go for a process of really digging deeper into that information and, and making it my own. And so I did that for like a couple months. And then let me tell, let me tell you, I did become exhausted by doing all that reading. So actually let's, let's, before I continue, let's have a sip of coffee or drink and I'll check if the microphone's okay. If you film videos, you probably know that one of the worst things that can happen is when your mic doesn't work or doesn't record, and then you record like a passionate 20 minute video and then you realize, oh, crap, I didn't record it and then you need to repeat the whole thing. It's the worst, it happened to me too many times. So I always, you know, stop sometimes, I'm like, let's check the microphone. So anyway, let's, let's continue. So yeah, I was telling you that it was exhausting, you know, listening to those books so many hours, especially when my girlfriend is away for like a weekend. She's a professional singer, so she goes to them, sings in concerts and makes, makes these tours singing tours and so I'm on my own and I'm like oh this is a great chance to do some mad learning and especially the first few weeks you know I was like at the end of the day I was like oh my god my brain is melting because I would think about it and would listen to those to that information for so much time that that I as I was by by like I'm a late person you know I'm Batman <laughs> jokes joke uh, I, I wake up late but I go to bed late so like at one or two a.m. at night, I would be walking my dog and I would feel like my brain's like barely take any more. But then the interesting part was that I went to bed and I was hyped. I was like, this day was so good because I feel like I got so much. And then I would sleep well, I would wake the next day up and I would be fresh again. And I was like, I'm ready to do more. And what I noticed too is that with time over the, the past, after like a month or so of doing that, I started to come comfortable with that. I, I guess I became, I, I developed a skill for that. I became comfortable at doing that. My brain probably adjusted itself to it. And I'm a bit like a machine doing that. So I'm not saying do this. I'm not saying it's for everyone. I'm concerned that maybe it's, it, it, it may fry the brains of others and burn them out. Uh, so be careful, you know, this is not a scientific trick. It's just something I tried. But you know, I just felt inspired to share with you like that's what happened. And then the next stage, the final stage, which we are at right now. So actually one of the things I did, because I want to make this YouTube thing do well, I decided, you know what, I, I should really look at the knowledge I have about YouTube. I spent a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of hours learning about how YouTube works back a couple years ago, a few years ago, making the March Stars journey. But I thought, you know what, let's revise the information. And I got this great course by video creators. I love it. I'm not, you know, they're not paying me, but you should just go check it out if, if you're into YouTube stuff. It was like something mind-blowing and new, but I looked at it 
and it reminded me of some important aspects and one of them was questioning you know who am i specifically making my video to which is kind of a basic marketing question but that reignited my process to ask that like so what's who's my audience who am i making this video for and i went through this long and intensive process like just like writing and writing answering questions who am i making these videos for and suddenly i realized you know there are actually a couple of themes which keep reoccurring and one of them is was mastery at the time but the other one was critical thinking Critical, I realized critical thinking is still important to me. And then that's the moment when everything started to connect because, you know, critical thinking was important for me and it's already something I'm in touch with through the martial arts journey. It's kind of a, a, a bridge between my, my work and it's something I love. And I, it's something also because I do want to create that significant impact on a global scale, a positive impact, obviously. I asked myself, you know, so, so is that useful to others? And I realized, you know what? Critical thinking is absolutely useful. It could be such a game changer for so many people. So many people lack critical thinking. I lacked critical thinking like a decade ago, like, like badly. I, I was, I believed in spiritual stuff and even 20 years ago, even worse. You know, I believed in, in superpowers and ghosts and stuff. And now, you know, I, I'm a much better critical thinker than I was and, and critical thinking changed my life. It made my life much, much better. You know, how I perceive the world, how I perceive information. And I thought this could be such a worthwhile goal to promote critical thinking, to not run around the place everywhere. And that, that also answered me a question which I posed to myself, asking myself, what's my connective tissue? That was my question. I realized I'm interested in many different things. I'm passionate about quite a few subjects, but I thought, what's the uniting connecting tissue which unites it all? And, and the answer came to me as well, critical thinking is, is, is that, you know, critical thinking can applies to so many subjects which I'm interested in and it kind of connects them. And I, I started thinking about it more and more. And I actually wrote a question to, to Matt Thornton, who you might know, you know, he's a, he's a great critical thinker. I wrote a message and asked, do you think, because that's the question I posed myself, or do you think that critical thinking makes people better? Like, you know, more caring, less biased, and we had a discussion, you know, we, we don't have the data to support it, but it seems to both seem to both of us that it does. And that, and for me, that was like a sign like, holy crap, this could be it. You know, this subject promoting critical thinking, making critical thinking more accessible and more popular could have that global positive impact with years and obviously a lot of work and a lot of thought put into it. It could lead to that result that I'm searching for. And that's when I, that's when it hit me and I was like, holy crap, I, I, I have to do this. You know, this is it. And so that's a bit of my character. That's a bit of my flaw. I sometimes when I, when I come to a big realization, I just go and do it. And I know it's not the best way, but uh, I thought about it for like a few hours and, and then everything clicked to me. I was like, I'm doing it. And then I just renamed the channel, the, the, the channel, The Journey. I just renamed it to Practical Critical Thinkers. Now, giving you a heads up, uh, I got a bunch of feedback that that I agree with, that Practical Critical Thinkers is is not the best name. It's, it's a bit too difficult on the tongue. That Critical Thinkers is enough. It just rolls off the tongue. And I noticed people saying to me, uh, the channel was initially Practical Critical Thinkers. But then I noticed people would tell me, oh, I saw you started the channel Critical Thinkers. And I was like, oh, they left out the word critical. And, and, and then I got the feedback and I realized, you know what, you're right. I made a vote and I realized, yeah, everyone is saying critical thinkers is better than practical critical thinkers. So thus I renamed the channel. The, the idea behind it is I'm a believer that it's better to make mistakes and learn from them early on than later. You know, if this is going to become big and then I change the name at the end of the day, at a later, later stage, it may have much greater impact than, you know, now. So, so I just Went, out, went on and improved it. And that makes me say, if you ever have feedback from me, I love good feedback. Hit me, write me a comment, let me know what you think, what's missing, what could be added. Yeah, just tell me everything. I, I, I really appreciate hearing feedback. So yeah, and that feedback made me rename the channel Critical Thinkers. And, and now we're here. I am, so basically recapping, I'm going through that same process of mad learning so I'm listening to lectures about critical thinking, uh, you know, for hours upon hours every day. I'm reading about it. I'm thinking about it. And I'm, I, I decided to, to do the same process, which worked for me with mastery, with the subject of mastery. So I take critical thinking, 
I find subjects which are fascinating, and then I start to recap them and make them into videos. So, so it would, so other people would get to know the information that I'm learning, and that I would also become better at that information. That I would, I would, you know, it would sink into me better. So it's kind of still a journey. It's kind of a practical, sorry, practical. I, I got used to saying that. It's kind of a critical thinking journey. So, so yeah. So it's still a journey. And the very last point. I'll make today in the video, there's going to be more. Uh, I got also feedback that uh, because I became so focused on making those videos about you know, just about uh, that subject, quoting others, some of my viewers started to miss my, started to miss me. Surprisingly, I was like, oh, really? You missed me? You didn't see that coming. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, yeah, so some of the viewers said, so where, where will we see you still talking to the camera? and will we see still your journey and i was also encouraged by my coach being coached these days uh, by a great great coach she said you know that that the same thing like people you know people are following your journey they're interested in your journey so why why would you stop showing your journey as much as you show the stuff you learned and so so i do commit i realize that's a good point so that's why i'm making this video and that's why we'll need more videos maybe less not as long but but yeah, videos where I just talk to you and, and let you know, you know, how is this journey going? How am I how am I developing and what I'm learning about critical thinking? What what's what are the challenges I'm facing along the way? What are the realizations and what's the progress? They're just like everything, you know, share the depths of my soul and heart and mind. So, so that's kind of the story. That's that's how the journey disappeared and critical thinkers appeared. I hope that gives that you know includes you better now, and you'll see what this is about. Uh, I wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who followed the journey and supported me for the way it means the world to me. It was kind of a difficult process for me to to, to you know question the hell out of everything that I believed in and, and and allowing myself to be in that space of unknown. And some of the support I had from some of the, some of you really helped that journey. And I hope that this journey of practical thinking, practical thinkers, is exciting to you as well. And you'll go together on this journey as well with me. And as I like to say, the, the slogan I created for this channel is, you know, we'll create a culture of critical thinking together. So let me know in the comments what you think about this all. Oh yeah, check this video, you know, check the playlist here. There's, there's uh, some, some of the videos are here where you can learn about the critical thinkers, like what videos are out there and I'll connect up with you soon. And again, let's keep on creating a culture of critical thinking together. Thank you.